so that was Glee Toxic. I know it was a little bit different than the original because this is actually off the um 100th episode. And they do that. And they just um, had to redo the songs that they've already done, but revamp them and do them a little bit different. So, um, chapter 22. Trace and Corey had their date. They went, hmm, I'm trying to think, what did they do? What was the first thing they did? Oh, they went to the aquarium, and they went bowling, and then they had dinner. And then finally, they're on the beach together right now. Well, I gotta see if I have any water in my water bottle, because there's something lodged in my throat. <sighs> okay. And now they're on the beach. I slowly blink my eyes open. A shiver went through my body as I realized the part of me that was freezing as the other part was comfortably warm. I looked up slowly and saw Trace looking back down at me. I realized my head was resting on his bare chest. <coughs> and my arms were wrapped and his arms wrapped around me. He kissed my forehead. Good morning, he greeted. Morning what? And yes, not moving to get up. I was too warm and comfortable. I love the feel of his arms wrapped around my topless body. And then last night rushed back to me and I smiled. We had hung out at the beach together until I began to literally fall asleep on my feet. Chase had led me over to a little opening. It was basically a mini cave. We had called inside and I had fallen asleep in this position. Our shirts were off and his arms lovingly wrapped around me. Trace helped me sit up after a few minutes. He pet my lips before standing up and slipping out of his jeans. He smirked to me. Want to join me for a morning swim? He offered casually. I jumped up and took my own jeans off, and I took Trace's hand, and we made our way down to the beach, our toes digging in the warm sand. We slowly slid into the cool water. Trace wrapped his arms around me and kissed me deeply. I rested my head on his shoulder. We stood there, rocking gently with waves. What about our parents? I asked after a few minutes. Told my dad we were at Zeke's for the night. Zeke is going along with it, so we're safe. He said, and kissed my cheek. I wrapped my arms around him in side content. Do you think we'll ever get attacked by a shark? You think we'll get attacked by a shark? I've always wanted to get attacked by a shark. And they That almost happened to me over in them. Damn, you took my leg off, I said with another, with another sigh. A shark almost took your leg off in the Vietnam War. Trace asked in her raising eyebrow. I nodded, duh. They're victors over there. I'm lucky I got out alive. Almost lost my leg in them. You know, I said. Trace ran a hand through my hair and smiled innocently. I leaned up and brought my lips to his and with a gentle kiss. Trace held me tightly and grinned. You ever you ever body surf before, Cory? He asked and then shook my head. He brought me out to the water a little further. When the wave comes up, just jump with it. He, ex he explains and demonstrated for me. The waves carry him towards the shore, and his head broke. And his head broke the surface. He shook his hair out and grinned, coming back over. The two of us by surfed together for a little, me laughing. Trace took it like he was having fun, even though he didn't really even smile. Or laugh, but throw a freaking party. Still, there was a ghost of a smile on his face. That was enough. We stopped after a while, and our niece caught up bloody from the sand. We grabbed our clothes and got back in the car. Trace rolled the windows down so that we could dry us off a little. Trace had Trace. I had so much fun. It was more than Chucky. Chucky Jesus, I said jovially. Good to know our date is more than a place with shitty pizza and a guy dressed in a giant mouse. Trace said, rolling his eyes, I piled and crossed my arms. You didn't have a childhood, did you? I whined. Trace smirked. My childhood involved soccer ball and running up and down that hill next to the house to get in shape. The hill you always curse at. I hate that freaking hill, I cried and pouted deeply. 
I'm sure it hates you too, he Trace said, unconcerned. You're sexy, I said. I sure, I sure am. He said, still unconcerned. He sighed and turned on the radio. We pulled into the, pulled into a, right, a red light and Trace leaned over and gave me a rough kiss on the mouth before straightening up. I smiled softly at him in Trace, in his Trace way and he sh showed me that he loved me. With every single dollar, I'll be sure to buy you flowers, cause money ain't no problem. When love is free, I scream along with a song currently blaring in the radio. Corey, shut up, Trace groan. I opened my mouth to continue singing, but Trace slapped the hand over my mouth. Stop, stop. I've I've seen them live, and you're ruining the song for me. He cried in annoyance. I looked his hand and yanked it away. I smiled innocently at him, glaring and wiping his hand on the seat. Literally... Literally, you're the one I see, and I can't seem to get them off my mind. I screamed as he slapped his hand back over my mouth. I looked at it like my life depended on it. Instead of yanking it, Trace gritted his teeth and held it against my mouth. I, gl I glared down at stupid Trace's hand. How rude for you to interrupt my beautiful singing just because you're jealous. After a few minutes, Trace slowly pulled his hand away. He wiped down my... He wiped it on my cheek and I swatted it and whimpered. Ew, I hate my spit on my face. Why do you think it's in my mouth? Where your dick should be. I whined, running the back of running the back of the back of my hand across my now wet cheek. You're such a sexual person, he said, shaking his head. And yet I'm a the virgin. I pointed out with a smug grin, Trace rolled his eyes and flipped me off, pulling Pulling into the parking lot of some ice cream place, he grabbed he grabbed our jeans and tossed me mine. We slipped into them, our jeans, and got out of the car without bothering with the sh with our shirt. We went up to the window and ordered twist cones. Once we had them, we sat at one of the tables together, shaded by the umbrella. Trace looked around before taking my hand and kissing me. We're closer to home now, he mumbled before looking at his ice cream. I nod and understand. Understanding the thought, I hated it. I wish Trace would just come out, but I understood that he didn't want to if it meant telling our parents we were dating, and, would, and it would meant having to deal with, the ho with his homophobic soccer team. But maybe soon, Trace would come out and talk to our parents about it. I don't think they'd be too upset. I mean, we're... We weren't actually brothers, we were just stepbrothers. Still, for a moment, Trace was reluctant, and we would have to be careful because of our reluctances. We could live with that. I could live with that. Corey, it helps if you actually eat the ice cream. I looked down at my hand. Trace spoke and groaned. No wonder it felt like I just came in it. Maybe my ice cream had melted, and it was sticking to my skin. Trace... Why didn't you tell me my ice cream is melting? You're a terrible boyfriend, I cried and jumped away as as I went to fling some of the melted ice cream on him. Do you want another ice cream? He asked and shook my head and silently stood up and threw my ice cream. Staring at my sticky hands, I grabbed some napkins and tried helplessly to wipe the ice cream off. Pout at it. Fine. I like you being on my hand. We could we could we could best frickin' friends. Trace watched me in the minute before I gave up with the napkins. We got back in the car and drove the rest of the way home. He stared at the house with a look I can only describe as regret. He handed me my shirt and I silently pulled up on, pulled his own on. Trace turned the car off and put and pulled the car keys out of the ignition. He hesitated before leaving and kissing me, leaning over and kissing me deeply. I wrapped my arms around his neck and kissed him back hard. We pulled away from each other. Trace gently brushed his fingers on my face before silently getting out of the car and mentally sighing and followed him. We went inside and Brandon and Mom smiled at us in the kitchen. Mom glanced and gave my hand a raise and eyebrow at my hand. Corey, what happened to your hand? He asked. I was jerking off in the car and we ran out of fuel so I just figured that my bodily fluid could propel us home. I exclaimed simply. Ice cream, Brandon guessed, trying on the thing for me. Trace nodded and I washed my hands and dried them and to get rid of the stupid melted ice cream. 
I turned around and saw the trace and left the room. The sound of his bedroom door shut and sounding down the stairs. I frowned to myself. Oh, I wish that he would just... Could just be open with our parents. I hate Trace pretending to still hate me. Huh. It drove me crazy. I just wanted to jump in his arms and kiss him deeply. I didn't like being in the shadows with a relationship like this, but I would just have to deal with it until Trace was ready to be open. Did you boys have fun at Zeke's house? Was anyone else there? Brent asked casually, sitting down, opening the newspaper in somewhat cheeky fashion. Yeah, we had fun, I said, ignoring the second question. I didn't know what to lie. Trace had told us our parents, other than were at Zeke's. I didn't know if Trace had told them someone else was there or not. Brent is signed to the newspaper down. Is he mad at me, Corey? Did he say anything? He asked quietly, clearly upset. I shook his head. He didn't say anything, Brennan. He's just upset that, but also think he can get over and you guys can talk about it. I assured him. He sighed sadly and ran a hand through his hair. I didn't know. I didn't know how bad it hurt him. He always said he didn't care. He mumbled. I just. I believe him. I'm dumb. He stood up, offered me a weak smile before going to the side door and over to the pool house. <sighs> Mom frowned the side. I better go after him. No jumping on the bed, she said, sternly below, following Brandon out of the house and into the pool house to calm him down. Ew, never mind. Let's just go with her calming him down. I went upstairs hesitantly outside Trace's bedroom, whined desperately to go in there and kiss him. But at the same time, I knew he probably needed a break from me. I went to my room and changed my clothes. I went downstairs and left a note for my mom and Brandon before slipping on my shoes and going in the garage. I grabbed Trace's soccer ball and left the house. I glared at the hill next to the house. Trace conquered you as a child. I should conquer you as a teenager, I said, laying out a brief battle cry, charging the hill. Bef but I forgot my right shoe. But I forgot to tie my right shoe and tripped over the lace. And I smacked under the ground, scrambling to grab the soccer ball before it fell all the way back down the hill. I powered and tied my shoe before standing up and glaring at the hill again. One day, just to wait, I grumbled before carefully walking up the stupid hill. I walked uh, I walked to the elementary school and began to practice my shooting. It calmed me down. Me to think a little. I would have to talk to Trace soon about our relationship. And our parents, he needed to come out. If he wanted us to have a real relationship, someone clapped their hands down on my shoulders and I jumped and screamed a little. I turned around, prepared to yell at Zeke, and froze. Danny smirked at me, Greg, and oh geez, Julia both standing, standing next to him along with some boy I didn't recognize. The t-shirt wore and now he was another one of the Trace's teammates. Greg and the guy I didn't know instantly moved forward to grab my arms, holding me tightly. Davy smirked got Davy smirk got wider and Julia glared at me. Her eyes starting to water a little. You know everything was fine before you came along. Zeke wasn't a faggot. Trace didn't use girls for sex. I think you're having a bad effect on those two. And it's really starting to piss all of us off, he said. His voice, victory. Just kick his ass already. I know he had something to do with Trace breaking up with me, Juliet said. And wiping her eyes just really. I thought you were supposed to be nice. Zeke said you were really nice. Why aren't you being nicer? I was getting scared. Trace wasn't going to show up and save me this time. I was on my own. And it was fucked out of my ass. I tried to, I tried and failed to tuck my arms free. God, I hate homophobic samba players. I whined and Davy cracked his knuckles, looking amused. Believe me, they hate you too. And he stepped closer to me. I couldn't even back away. Juliet nodded and Davy continued. And Greg and the guy holding me smirked and Davy pulled his fist back and the muse in the eyes, eyes locked. Um, I scared one. Oh, this is gonna hurt. End of the chapter. So, what do you guys think? Do you think Trace 
is it just gonna show up? Do you think Zeke is gonna show up? Do you think both of them are gonna show up? And I'm gonna let you guys know, um, the boy that Trey, um, Corey did not recognize, his name is Tommy, and he will be, um, introduced very soon, but I thought I'd just give you that. So yeah, until next time, gays, okay, just ask the GSA. Mwah.